Hey! Hello there and welcome to... I don't know where we are now. I think we're in part 6 or 7. But nonetheless, today we're tackling the built-in CSS support in Blitz. We've been working our way down this list on the left, the basics in the documentation. Once we're done with this list, we'll go on to a little bit more advanced stuff like routing and authorization and how databases work. And then we will build an application. I want to ask you guys to give me some ideas of what we can build together as a full stack app. Let me know in the comments. And also if you like the vid, you know, give us a like, give us a subscribe there, maybe. If you're in the mood, it will help us a lot. Cool, let's get into it. So Blitz does come with built-in CSS support. You have options. The first option is to add a global style sheet. So I think this is very similar to Next, but you can import a single style sheet into your app.js file. And those styles will be available throughout the application. Doesn't matter if you're working in a component level in any page, Blitz will see that single import style sheet everywhere. And the reason this is cool is, is that you get hot module reloading. So every if you make changes in the style.css file and you hit save, your app state will actually stay the way it was. It won't be a complete page reload. So that's a time saver. The next thing that we can do is we can add component level CSS with the built-in CSS module support in Blitz. And we'll, I'll show you exactly how that works. The main difference here is, is that the CSS module files can be imported anywhere in your application. Another advantage of the component level CSS is, well, first of all, it gives you a little bit of um, sanity because you can separate your CSS properly. And here's what I really like. You can have the same class name in different CSS modules and they won't conflict because CSS modules will actually put a unique identifier in front of those classes. So no clashes. CSS modules are an optional feature and are only enabled for files with the .module.css extension. So if you add this, then Blitz knows it's looking at a module. You can still use links, like style sheet links. You can do that. Just another thing to note about the CSS modules. When it is built for production, Blitz will separate these files into minified CSS files. And that means you only have to load CSS on a specific page that requires it. If you go the global route, then this whole file will get pulled in each and every time. It will be minified, but yeah, that's pretty much what will happen there. Then of course, SAS is very popular. SAS is supported. Tailwind is also supported. And as a bonus, I'm going to show you how to install Tailwind in the end of this video. You just run npm install SAS or yarn install SAS. And then in your blitz config.js file, you can specify which paths you want SAS to be operated on. Then there is, of course, less and stylus support. I've never used it. I'm not going to go over this. Um, I'm not sure if it's extremely popular, but I'm not very familiar with that. If you're using TypeScript and you do not have this module installed, your editor, your IDE will not recognize the module.css files. It won't know what to do with it. So this is just a cool add-on that you can... Um, that you can look at if you're using TypeScript. So let's go look at some examples. What you're looking at is a basic Blitz project. No authorization, no database, no nothing. In that project, you will have an app folder. Within the app folder, I've created a style.css file, and I've styled the body background color as pink. So according to the documentation, we can include whatever is in here within the app.js file, and it should work. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like now. Cool. That's what we started out of the box. And I'm going to import the app.style.css file. There we go. Okay, so now the background's pink. Cool. It works. 
Let's look at the modules example. I've created another folder under the pages folder called components. And in this folder, I created a heading component, which is just a H1 tag with some text in it. And I did the same for a subheading. And the reason I did this was to demonstrate how CSS module separates or gives your class names unique identifiers. So you don't have to worry about using important and putting things in a chronological order. For the heading, we're importing this file, heading.module.css. So Blitz knows it's looking at CSS modules. And in here, I have a .text class and the font size is 10. If you look at the subheading file, you will also see a .text class with a font size of 1EM. So this is very small, so we can see the difference. And this is very large. And I will go and pull these into our index.js file, which is basically the landing page. And I'll remove this. Usually you'll see some sort of conflict if you're using a text um, class name for both of these components. And here you can see that clearly we're using the same class name, but they are, have different styles. And if we inspect, we'll see that they are given unique class names, even though we used the same class name because we're humans and we want to see these patterns. And that's basically CSS within Blitz. It's really easy to use. So I promised you guys I would show you how to install Tailwind on Blitz. It's really easy. We just do this because Tailwind is a recipe within Blitz. And we'll take a look at recipes in a bit more detail soon. But the point that we're trying to carry over now is that it's really easy to install Tailwind. And seeing that this video did cover some CSS stuff, I thought it appropriate to just throw this in here. So we'll just let this install and then we'll test it, of course. Okay. Right, so there's a little bit of a process that we're going through. So Tailwind needs a couple of dependencies to work correctly. One of them is post CSS so that it can take out unused styles. And then it also needs auto prefixer. And now it's just showing us the files it created. And it's actually made a change in our app to accommodate for Tailwind. So let's see what it did. Okay, it created an index.css file. Cool, so let's, let's test it. Right, this page loaded. Let's see if we can add some Tailwind class names to one of our pages. 16, let's see if it applies. Yes, it did apply. So that's Tailwind. One command, couple of enters, and you're good to go. So I'll see you guys in the next video, and then we take it further. Don't forget to subscribe and let me know what app you guys want to build, and then we'll tackle it together. Cheerio!